We're here today with Cece Powers, a performance artist who combines live performance with video, dance, animation, and language. Cece, you describe yourself as an interdisciplinary artist, and um, I think that means that you kind of um, work in many media. Can you explain um, how you do your artwork and what it means? Interdisciplinary is just sort of uh, a really easy way to say that I, I work across a lot of media. Um, and it's, again, I really admire artists who are able to show you their portfolio and it's just really like start to finish, it's really obvious. Like this person works with, you know, wax sculptures or this person works with oil paintings or this person has a, one type of performance that they do very, very well. Um, and I'm, I'm much more, I guess you could <laughs> ADD about it, um, where I'm, I'm always just trying things, different things out. Uh, but thematically, I'm, I'm often working with the same ideas. I think the best way for people to get an idea of what you do maybe is to talk a little bit about some of the, some of the work you've done. And I was particularly interested in um, um, the three-minute date. Oh, and, yeah. and I'll tell you what I think of you for $5. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about those pieces. OK. It was this project where I would be anyone's girlfriend in for three minutes. So just on one day, you could come and we would have a relationship for three minutes, um, which is obviously ludicrous. But just to put that idea out there and see how people responded to it, I was very curious about it. We set up this really funny setup where the front half of the gallery was like a very sort of cold waiting room, like an airport waiting lounge. Your name would be called and you'd be led behind the curtain into a whole other world um, with much softer lighting and there was a nice couch and a beautiful carpet and pillows and there was gifts lying around. Um, and I had a little timer and I'd set the timer. So we'd have our th three minute date. Of all those people, they were almost all, I would say hurt when the timer went ding and I kicked them out. It was very hard to get rid of them. I went into it just trying to understand what what people thought a girlfriend meant um, and how people approached relationships and how, 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 I guess, how real are our feelings, how real are feelings. And it turns out feelings are very real. So for, I'll tell you what I think of you for $5. It's, I'm really interested in setting up situations where people expect to be treated very badly and then see what kind of people actually still want to go through with it. And I, I sort of like to, I like to surprise them by, by not treating them badly. It's actually more of an exercise for myself in judgment to, I re really wanted to see, sort of examine my own judgments, very snap judgments, often strangers who I have nothing to go on except appearances and maybe how they approached me mm. and to really examine in my own head before the words fly out of my mouth why do I think this about this person and how did that happen so it ends up being something it's kind of halfway between um, like an analyst and a fortune teller mm -hmm, a little bit mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of perception upon superficially looking at a person versus how the reality of their life might actually be yeah and you have to sort of make a judgment call about that yeah do you want the viewers to understand what you're trying to express does that matter or is it only what they see in their perception that they should be getting out of it do you have an opinion on that in general I actually just prefer it for the viewer to to bring their own interpretation to it uh, and and very often um, it's, it's more interesting for me to hear how people respond than to, than to tell them how they should be responding. Did you want to um, be an artist from the time you were very young or did you want to be a ballerina and then you changed along the way? <laughs> I, I've always wanted to be an artist. Um, I was very fortunate that right from a very young age I was really encouraged by everyone around me, um, both other children and adults, to, to explore creative things, to make and to do. Cece, do you uh, feel that art is political or 
personal. I don't think it's really possible to separate the two. Um, even people who are very cl who claim to be apolitical about their work, you can you can see a politics in their work, even though they may not be aware of it. We can't separate ourselves from the culture we live in. It's not possible. So yeah, I'd say that even even when I'm at my most personal, that's when things are still very deeply there's there's a, a politics running through that. So, do you dream about ideas, or is it? by observing people or do ideas just do you free associate and it just pops into your head or do you have a particular thing that allows you to get into that zone? Sometimes it's just a lot of hard work um, and other times it feels like it just like went pop and came up there but usually that's also as a result of this obsessive process that is, is really just another form of hard work. Do you feel that the next big art movement um, will be technology based and where the medium will, will end up being more important maybe than the content? There's definitely, you know, a, times in my life when I've just been like, oh, I'll just, you know, like pick up a gizmo and use it. That's, it's very often unsatisfying and that's the kind of idea I end up putting down. Bad art is just bad. <laughs> okay, so Zizi, is there anything else um, that you want to say about about your artwork and in, in terms of kind of um, living your life as art? Oh yeah, that's funny. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend it to people. I mean, it's uh, definitely a way to, you know, you'll get to try a lot of things um, and they won't necessarily all make you happy, uh, but you'll learn, you'll learn something, which is, <laughs> which is also good. I guess something I've I've also learned is when you when you sort of like bring people in as part of your artwork, if you want to call it that, um, it's what ends up happening is that with uh, with sort of strangers or people you barely know, it's a way to create a very uh, real relationship very fast, uh, which is a beautiful thing, but also comes with its own dangers. People end up not knowing where they stand really. Um, mm -hmm which is also, I guess, like, when do we ever know where we really stand? Yeah, so, so it's just part <laughs> just of what you're doing, it, right? Yeah, just making it really clear that no one, no one knows what's going on ever. Okay, well, this has been great. I really appreciate your time. Um, it's just been wonderful talking with you, and we'll be, um, we'll be looking forward to seeing your next project and all the ones after that. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Debbie. If a woman were a lioness, what characteristics would she have? A woman as a lioness, um, great hair. <laughs> they don't have manes, I know. Um, gee, that's interesting. Um, I think of lionesses as very fierce and in charge and really all about sisterhood. So that's, yeah, I guess that's what, that's what a lioness would be.